We want to turn now back to the Take Care of Maya civil trial. Today, the jury heard from a detective with the Special Victims Unit at the Sarasota County Sheriff's Office. She testified she was assigned to the case when Johns Hopkins All Children's Hospital took custody of then 10-year-old Maya Kowalski because of allegations of child abuse against her mother, Beata. The detective testified about her interview with Jack Kowalski about Maya's care at Johns Hopkins All Children's Hospital. Now, the jury also heard part of those audio recordings where Jack Kowalski said that he wanted Maya to stay at the hospital for treatment, even though Beata didn't. And it is our testimony of the day. I mean, when we were in the meeting um, with the doctors one day, and Beata wanted to say, Maya, I'll sign her out. And I said, hold on, I'm out. And this wasn't in, you know, wasn't written down, which I don't, I was kind of mad about. But uh, I asked the doctors. I said, "What's the time frame you're talking about?" And they explained. I said, "That's doable." And was my wife happy with me? What I said? No, absolutely not. Okay. So you have to, yeah. There's times I'm gonna go the other way. Okay. And thanks for sharing that. Um, I don't know why they didn't write that down. Was this a theme of your conversation with Mr. Kowalski where he was expressing to you that he was supportive of, of having Maya treated at all children's? Yes, that did come up. Your Honor, we're beyond this. We're leading on this stuff. On that question, was sustained the... Um, do you, do you recall during your conversations with Mr. Kowalski whether he made other statements to you regarding his uh, either consent or lack of consent at keeping my adult children? That's my recollection, but I might need to. Yeah, just the answer. You can answer that one. Okay. Uh, that's my recollection, but I would probably need to refer to the transcript to know specifically what, what those statements were when they occurred in the conversation. Okay. Um, Your Honor, I'd like to publish into evidence. Uh, published to the jury what's been previously marked as 3121B. My bigger question is why would a parent go to these extremes? Because I'm told this is the last resort. But you're saying it's not. And this is not, I mean, also would have taken was a question from you somewhere along the line that, that are we doing the right thing? Maybe we should, maybe we should go back and, and talk to another doctor, do something more conventional, not something that's likely to kill I'm, her. I'm effective of keeping her here. That's what I told you. And if the youth, they think something else, I'm supportive of keeping her here and loving Detective Graham, having heard that audio, does that refresh your recollection as to the conversation that you were having with Mr. Kowalski? Yes, it does. Um, was there a time during the conversation that you had with Mr. Kowalski where he indicated to you any concerns with Mrs. Kowalski's behavior? Yes. Okay, and what types of concerns was he expressing to you? She wasn't being cooperative with the things that were being requested. He stated he was appalled by some of her behavior. Um, Your Honor, I'd like to publish to the jury what's in evidence as 3121C. You may. But it, it's just not your, your wife's behavior is very concerning to me. Sure. And it's getting worse right now. Just, you know, she not want to cooperate. Along those lines, Detective Graham, did um, Mr. Kowalski uh, discuss with you uh, during this time <clears throat> that um, any concerns he had with Mrs. Kowalski following the rules? He'd expressed there had been some interference on her part with his him trying to communicate with Maya, yes. Okay. Um, Your Honor, I would like to publish to the jury what's been received into evidence as 3121D. He hasn't got to, yes. Because I know mom talked to her once, and that was supervised. supervised. And I guess she got shut down many times because she was falling off. She could. Yeah, she could. And, why, why told, you and then she told me what she said. I said, you can't do that. Don't talk about medical stuff. Why are you talking about the lawyer? Why are you going to... Why, why can't she control... Her? If her daughter is her main priority and her... Why can't she follow the rules and do, exactly. do what she's being told? Exactly. 
Uh, joining us to discuss criminal defense attorney and former prosecutor Franz Borgart. Friday is with Franz. All right, Franz, here's the thing. So yes, there's a, a documentary on Netflix about Maya and her family. I've not watched that on purpose because I wanted to watch this trial in its entirety to see what came in during the course of this trial. And part of the issue if I have is I feel like there's a portrayal by the plaintiff of a family who has come together and absolutely had no issues, no problems with anything done by the family, but rather it's all on the hospital. And when I hear that, you know, the father indicated, yeah, I had problems with Bianca, my wife. She wasn't cooperative. I was appalled by some of her behavior. To me, that just um, starts to put a little chip in the armor of the plaintiff's case. I don't. I don't think it's just a chip, Judge. I, I think we just saw somebody sink a, I think we saw somebody just sink a battleship. I mean, if I'm a juror, I'm thinking, well, if this is how he felt, how how do we expect the doctors and the medical facility to have, have done any better? I mean, he tells the, it through what he's talking to the detective, he tells the world essentially, look, I got concerns about my wife. I've got concerns about what's going on. Uh, guys, if they lose, this might be the clincher. Mm. This might be the clincher. And here's the question. The plaintiffs have known about this from day one. What did they do in their case in chief to defuse this? Well, that was gonna be my question to you, Franz. Is it imperative upon the plaintiffs to have explained Beata's behavior. They didn't necessarily do that. And now we're hearing testimony from a number of people brought on by the defense about Beata's behavior. And should the plaintiff have done more? It's a two, 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 uh, double question. I hate doing that to you, but should they have done more? But also, how, how really damaging is it to their case? I mean, Maybe, you know, we all have issues and concerns with, our, with our, our spouses. There are instances and places where I wish my wife was more, you know, uh, subdued. She certainly has places where she wishes I was more subdued. Not mine, not you know, my, that, me and my spouse don't have any of that. You're perfect, we know this. <laughs> but Franz, so is it really that fatal to the case? If you don't get in front of it, it is perceived as if you're hiding it. That is the problem. Is it reasonable that he was stressed, that he was concerned, that he was worried? Well, you know, if we take a step back, absolutely it's reasonable. He's in it. He is in the weeds dealing with this on a daily basis. She clearly has a mental health issue. It's a fact not in dispute. She committed suicide. So, I mean, why not let that Band-Aid get pulled off when you're in control of pulling off the Band-Aid? Because now what it looks like is, well, wait a minute. This, this is something that was out there that you guys didn't tell, tell us about. It's a bad fact that could have been explained, by, but not getting in front of it, Michael, that is the problem. Are you lying to us? Are you trying to hide something from us? And again, if you felt this way, how are we to expect that the hospital felt any differently? Yeah, I agree with you. And you're not supposed to ignore bad facts. When you learn trial skills, that's one of the things they teach you for exactly those reasons. I'm hopeful because, Franz, I want you to watch this together with us. I'm hopeful we can show it. There's a video. Now, this was done outside the presence of the jury, but it plans to be admitted before the jury, as I understand it, of Maya and her brother playing together after they lost their mother, after Maya returned home. And physically, she looks to be very active, doing well. So watch some of this, Franz, and you can comment as you're watching um, what you see in her behavior. Does this hurt the plaintiff's case? Well, you have what looks like a normal acting little girl who's playing with her brother, who's chasing after what I, I guess is either a cat or a dog. Um, <laughs> you, know, a dog. Uh, I, you know, I mean, Judge, look, if the, if the undertone is, is that she was exaggerating or faking and that none of this is real, this hurts. If the undertone is, so what, this is a condition that manifests itself in different ways, then maybe it's salvageable. I don't think this helps. And I and again, I think the problem is is this again, if you're a juror, you're thinking, well, wait a minute. If this is what this little girl's doing, 
why wouldn't the the, the, the the medical providers, the people, the boots on the grounds think, hey, there's there's something that smells a little funny here? Yeah, I think it takes away the bad faith. You know what I mean? In terms of the, the issue she had with showing pain at certain times, not showing pain. They were confused. And I think if the more you can show that they were confused, the more it helps their case.